This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 6th day of April in the year 2021. I'm Gordon Mosley, thanking you for joining us. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Less than an hour after the police issued a wanted bulletin for this man, Rondell Bacchus, to be questioned about the murder of Ricardo Fagundes, known as Paper Shorts, the man turned himself over to the police and is now being questioned about that murder. Fagundes was shot dead two weeks ago by two gunmen just after he walked out of the Pam Court night spot. He was a close friend of drug convict Roger Khanna, who has called the police out for not doing enough with the investigations. The man who surrendered to the police today, Rondel Bacchus, is well known to law enforcement. He was released from prison in late 2019 after serving time for the killing of scrap metal dealer Akbar Ali. He was originally charged for murder in 2008. But after the two murder trials resulted in a hung jury, he pleaded guilty to the lesser count of manslaughter in early 2019. The presiding judge in handing out a 16-year sentence also ordered that the years that Bacchus spent behind bars from the time of his remand in 2008 be subtracted from the sentence. With that order, he was released from prison months after the order was handed down in late 2019. The police today offered no details about his possible links to the Fagundes execution. Based on the video recording of the shooting dead, the two men who carried out the murder appeared to be medium built and tall. The man who surrendered today is on the heavy side. Police sources, however, suspect that there were at least two other persons waiting in the white getaway car that sped off from the scene with the gunmen after the hit. Late this afternoon, the Ghana police force also revealed that it was reviewing video recordings of the incident from a police-managed CCTV camera that is located in the area. Surveillance video recordings from other CCTV cameras are also being enhanced. Today, the police also said it has been updating the family of the murdered man about the investigations. Fagundes was shot more than 15 times about his body. Roger Khan has claimed that the bullets were really meant for him. The 42-year-old Fagundes was heading to a vehicle owned by Roger Khan when he was shot dead while Khan and other relatives were still inside the night spot. The investigations are ongoing tonight. More news coming up in just a moment. Diana, we've been through it all. But as a people, we have weathered every storm and risen to every challenge. Because it is the people of Guyana that gives it its strength. All the people, regardless of race, class, or religion, we, we are, are one, one people, people, one strength. strength. And now is our time. A time to rise. Together, we rise. At Sash Financial, we create strategies for strengthening business and personal finances while helping our clients to build sustainable wealth. Our financial and business consultancy services are uniquely tailored to ensure every client receives quality packages and optimal results. Our financial services include financial reporting and analysis, financial status assessment, internal audits, bookkeeping and records management, financial planning advice, tax returns, our business advisory services are related to business plans, business startups, operational improvement, business management, document preparation, procedures development, efficient marketing. Call or WhatsApp us today for your free consultation on telephone number 592-665-6045. Sash Financial, strengthening businesses, building wealth. Hi, Regent Five. I'm Dr. Wilson, Regional Health Officer. Um, this morning, I took my filaria pills, actively participating in the MDA campaign, and I urge you to do the same when you see the pill distributors come to your homes. Thank you very much. Your filaria pills, use your paper drug IDA. Let's all get in the filaria. More employers are using social media to monitor employees. Here are some ways to maintain professionalism online. Never share confidential information about anyone, whether colleagues or clients. Do not share inappropriate posts from work gatherings. Keep company social media posts neutral. Never argue or make offensive comments. Never complain about your job to clients. Remember, what goes online stays online. Stop oversharing and get safe online. For the 
past two decades, the global community prioritized eliminating lymphatic filariasis, commonly known as filaria, as a public health problem. Many countries in the Americas have achieved this goal. Uh, we're looking to have 100% uh, eradication of this disease in Ghana. So we look forward to all of our citizens working with our teams for the Ministry of Health as they go around in our communities, uh, meeting with you to administer this place. And I will encourage you all to take your pills so that we can once and for all rid Ghana of filariasis. We have to get rid of uh, the negatives in relation to filaria. So please, let the science be your guide and take the tablets. My family would be taking their pills. And I do hope that you would also be taking your pills so that we can together work on these native filaria from Ghana. Filaria gonna get knocked TKO. A message from the Ministry of Health in collaboration with PAHO. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. Mom, what are you doing with GPL on your list? Child, you forgot I have to pay GPL. You got time with GPL. I have to keep these lights on. The customers who think in that manner and refuse to honor their obligation to GPL are obviously not playing their part in ensuring quality service delivery. So, I will continue to pay my GPL bill on time, every time. I recognize the value of your point, Mom. You were right. In the courts now, 24-year-old Mark Anthony Henry was today charged and remanded to jail for the murder of pensioner Suruj Dio Diochand of Westbury Base. Henry was not required to enter a plea to the indictable murder charge. The murder accused is the brother of Joel Henry, who was one of the Burbese teen cousins found brutally murdered last September in the same West Coast Burbese area. The murdered pensioner, 68-year-old Suruj Dio Diochand, was one of the early suspects in the double murder case of the Henry Cousins. However, he was released from police custody after being questioned months ago. Last Monday, the elderly man was found chopped to death in his home. By Wednesday, a wanted bulletin was issued for the arrest of Mark Anthony Henry. He surrendered to the police the following day and reportedly confessed to the crime, according to law enforcement sources. At the courthouse today, the Burbies youth remained silent throughout his appearance. He was hurried off from the courthouse moments after his appearance ended and will remain behind bars until his next court appearance at the end of this month. Police investigators are probing the murder of 23-year-old Roy Ross of Swan on the Linden Suze Lake Highway. The man's body was discovered in his house with multiple stab wounds early on Monday morning. He was last seen alive on Sunday night. The discovery was made by a workmate who lives in the same area. After noticing the man's body near an open door, the workmate raised an alarm and alerted the police. There are reports this evening that four persons have been taken into custody for questioning in relation to the murder. The investigation continues tonight. Hours after the body of a man was discovered between rocks on the western side of the Demerara River at Bellevue, family members of a missing 19-year-old, Joel Skeet, identified the body as his. The youth had been reported missing last Wednesday, after he never returned home from an evening trip to the barbershop at the Harbour Bridge Mall. He was last seen alive leaving that shop. 
In a Facebook post last evening, his father confirmed the death, adding that the family is overwhelmed by the loss. The police force in a statement last evening confirmed that the body discovered on the bank of the river was positively identified as the youth by his uncle. 19-year-old Joel Skeet was a University of Guyana computer science student. A post-mortem examination which was performed today found that he died from drowning. In Linden, the family of a 21-year-old Linden woman is seeking the public's help in locating her. The young woman, Shona Dover, was last seen on Saturday evening by her boyfriend, who told relatives that she left the home that they shared for work. The woman's workplace has since told the family that the last time she was at work was last Thursday and has not been seen or heard from since then. The boyfriend and other family members have since filed a missing persons report with the police in Linden. According to the grandmother, Constance Dover, family members are extremely worried about the missing woman since she is not known to be away from her home and not in contact with anyone. The grandmother says several of her friends have reached out to the family with their concerns, but with very little information about the whereabouts of the young woman. She said her granddaughter was not known to be having any problems with anyone. Family members are asking for anyone who may know the whereabouts of Shona Dover to contact the nearest police station or the family on telephone numbers 442-1616 or 670-6846. Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony is encouraging citizens to go out to the vaccination sites across the country and be vaccinated against COVID-19. Moments after he was administered with a Russian-made Sputnik V vaccine that arrived over the weekend, Dr. Anthony reminded that vaccines work and the COVID-19 vaccines will prevent people from contracting the serious forms of the disease. As you know, vaccines are very protective and all the vaccines that currently are available globally uh, are very important to protect people from COVID-19. Getting the vaccine, um, I know some people might have some doubts about getting the vaccine, but getting the vaccine really protects you. And um, it protects you from getting the more severe form of the disease. And uh, even if you do get infected, you'll get a milder form of the disease. So these vaccines make a big difference. And for those persons who are skeptical that, you know, the vaccines have only been around in a short while and they have doubts, this vaccine or these vaccines overall, vaccines that are currently in use for COVID-19, uh, have been tested in thousands of people during the clinical trials and have also now been administered to millions of people uh, around the globe. The government ruled out additional vaccine sites today in its effort to ramp up the vaccination of citizens. Over 40,000 persons have already been vaccinated in the past three weeks. The health ministry is hoping to vaccinate as many as 40,000 people each week moving forward. The COVID-19 situation in the country continues to be worrying. In the past five days, 14 persons lost their lives to the virus and almost 200 new cases were recorded. Last month saw over 1,600 new cases and more than 30 deaths. Members of the Joint Services arrested more than 100 persons over the weekend for breaching the COVID-19 curfew order. Just before midnight on Saturday, the Joint Services swooped down on a number of night spots that were still operating beyond 9.30 p.m. While the curfew begins at 10.30 p.m., bars and restaurants are expected to close their doors one hour before. At the Attitude Bar in Station Street, Kitty members of the Joint Services arrested 19 persons who were found partying after the curfew. They were loaded in the GDF bus and taken to the police station where they were charged for breaching the COVID-19 regulations. Over at the Cairo Sports Bar in Charlotte Street border, a total of 27 persons were arrested by the Joint Services after midnight. They too were taken to a police station in a GDF bus and charged. The Joint Services also swooped down on the Magic City Strip Club in Kitty and arrested several persons for breaching the curfew. With Ghana seeing a surge in new coronavirus cases, the government has moved to step up the enforcement of the coronavirus regulations. The commander for A Division Assistant Commissioner of Police, Simon McBean, told News Source that the operations will continue. It's trendy to share your vacation plans, photos, and location on social media. But do you know who is seeing your posts? Sharing that you're on vacation or a business can signal to potential burglars that your home is empty. 
using location services can also allow people to track your whereabouts, making you an easy target for theft. Be aware of what information you share about your location and your possessions. Remember, what goes online stays online. Stop oversharing and get safe online. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. For the past two decades, the global community prioritized eliminating lymphatic filariasis, commonly known as filaria, as a public health problem. Many countries in the Americas have achieved this goal. Uh, we're looking to have 100% uh, eradication of this disease in Ghana. So we look forward to all of our citizens working with our teams for the Ministry of Health as they go around the communities. Uh, meeting with you to administer this place. And I will encourage you all to take your pills so that we can once and for all rid Diana of filaria. We have to get rid of uh, the negatives in relation to filaria. So please let the science be your guide and take the tablet. My family would be taking their pills. I do hope that you would also be taking your pills so that we can together work on the native filaria from there. Filaria gonna get knocked TKO. A message from the Ministry of Health in collaboration with PAHO. Across the region right now, Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Keith Rowley, has tested positive for COVID-19. The Prime Minister began experiencing flu-like symptoms yesterday and was subsequently tested for the virus. He is now in isolation and is under medical supervision. Rowley was scheduled to receive his COVID-19 vaccine in Tobago today. The Prime Minister had previously announced that he would be in Tobago during the Easter holidays and once the vaccines became available during that time, he would be vaccinated. His vaccination has been put on hold with a positive test result. Coronavirus figures released by health authorities across South America yesterday show a number of countries grappling with a spike in infections and deaths. Uruguay and Paraguay registered record numbers of daily deaths, while the total number of COVID cases surpassed the 13 million mark in Brazil. The surge has been attributed to the spread of the Brazil variant. The variant is thought to be more than twice as transmissible as the original. The Brazil Public Health Institute has indicated that it has detected 92 variants of coronavirus in the country. 
Experts say the development of new variants is not surprising since all viruses mutate as they make copies of themselves to spread. The P1 or Brazil variant has become a cause for concern because it is thought to be much more contagious than the original strain. And finally tonight, international news. The United States has joined talks in Vienna aimed at reviving the Iran nuclear deal, which the Trump administration abandoned back in 2018. U.S. President Joe Biden has said he wants to return to the landmark accord, but the six remaining state parties need to find a way for him to lift the sanctions imposed by his predecessor and for Iran to return to the agreed limits on its nuclear program. Iran has said it will not meet the U.S. face-to-face -face until that happens. Officials from the UK, France and Germany have been acting as intermediaries, shuttling between the two hotels in the Austrian capital. Diplomats from the two other remaining parties, Russia and China, are also attending the meeting. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting. Stay safe.